years of tumult with the Boston Symphony Orchestra ended last spring with the selection of Andres Nelsons as the youngest music director in more than 100 years. The highly sought-after conductor has been wrapping up commitments all over the world before fully taking the podium at Symphony Hall this fall. Today we learned what artistic direction the BSO is heading as Nelsons announced his first season of programming, WGBH's Beach's arts editor, Jerry Bowen, is back from that this afternoon. So, how was he? What did he tell you? Well, this is all about Andres Nelson's. As you just mentioned, there's been this terrible period of tumult mm -hmm. and, and not having a music director. We finally have one, and the, this first season will be all about him, his biography, his upbringing, his roots, his traditions, and here's what he had to say about uh, how he's reflecting on his first season already. It's introducing myself to the orchestra, to get to know orchestra better, to, to, um, uh, to enjoy the world class, class quality what the orchestra has, and to, you know, just to, like enjoy driving the Ferrari. <laughs> He's very engaging. He's very fun. He's, I, I think he's accessible in a way that we haven't seen from a music director in quite some time. So I think even as you can see throughout mm -hmm. the program for the BSO, there's a vitality that's at the BSO right now. All right. Brian McCreeth, who produces weekly Boston Symphony broadcasts on WGBH's radio sister station, WCRB, welcome to Greater Boston. So tell us, Brian, what's the significance about the weeks that Andres is going to be uh, conducting? Because it's not every week, but it's a, a large portion of the season. Right. So Andres is conducting 10 weeks of the coming season, spread out over the course of several months. And as Jared just mentioned, the story is introducing Andres to the audience and to the orchestra, allowing the orchestra to get a sense of Andres. And this happens through uh, getting a sense of the music that has informed his life so far and getting a sense of the collaborators that he's worked with so far, even as he is reaching out to collaborator, uh, collaborators like Michael Gandolfi, the Boston composer, John Harbison, the Boston composer, Gunther Schuller, all these legendary Boston mm -hmm. composers, as a way of building a bridge mm -hmm. between his own past and now his future going forward. And he's married to a famous soprano himself. Yeah, yeah. Christina Opelias is his wife, and she is a spectacular soprano. She's got a contract with the Met that will keep her on the East Coast for quite some time. And their opening gala concert is going to feature Christina, along with one of the best and most talked about tenors in the world, Jonas Kaufmann. They're going to be doing operatic excerpts, and, and very significantly, that concert's going to start with the Overture to Tannhäuser by Richard Wagner. Now, when Andres was five years old, his parents took him to a complete performance of Tannhäuser. I don't know how parenting <laughs> yeah, happened really. that way, but, but that was sort of the spark that made him want to be a musician. And so there's something very symbolic about Tannhäuser being the very first notes that Andres conducts with the BSO. Now, what's it like for both the conductor and the orchestra, frankly, to go through this kind of transition? Because let's face it, the season with James Levine was in flux because he wasn't there most of the time. Yeah, yeah. And this has been a very I exceptional see. transition. I mean, this, is, this has gone on a long time. Usually it's not quite like this. But it does speak to how an orchestra identifies itself with a music director. And there was another transition several years ago, many decades ago, that, was, that had a similar sort of feel to it. There was a time when Charles Munch was the music director of the Boston Symphony. And you see him there. He, he was known for spontaneous performances for sort of a, a laissez-faire attitude for saying players we know this let's go home and then <laughs> and, and so the, the performances were spectacular and passionate and spontaneous but then uh, it only took a little while before maybe things got a little frayed at the edges and so the next music director after that was Eric Leinsdorf an Austrian conductor who came from the Metropolitan <laughs> Opera and laid down the law this is not exactly the same phenomenon, but there's a reaction to those Levine years and the way that all ended with mm -hmm. Andres. Levine working with highly intellectual music mm -hmm. that a lot of people had a hard time relating to, and Andres now coming in with something very different. Levine having physical ailments that, that kept him off the podium. Andres, young, mm -hmm. vigorous, 35 years old, they very explicitly went out and got a young conductor who is in the prime of his life to take this orchestra into the next era. And you saw that today, too. They had a member of the orchestra speaking uh, about the, the tenure, too, and about embracing him. And you could see already there's a sort of interplay mm -hmm. with the orchestra. You, you can tell that they're appreciating him, that there's, there's this breath. And in, in a very open way, this member of the orchestra also talked about how difficult the last 10 years have mm -hmm. been 
And so the, yeah. they are looking forward to this moment, too, where there is going to finally be this connection, which you saw even as he was up there at the podium, how affable he is. And he's very self-deprecating. He talked about how nervous he was just being <laughs> at the podium. I mean, this is a, a, a very modest personality that we've not seen for quite some time. You made him nervous. The first question out to him was, how are you going to make your mark on the orchestra? He goes, oh. <laughs> I thought he was going to freeze in the spot. I was trying to, trying to do my Mike Wallace on him. <laughs> I'm sorry to embarrass you that last time when I did that. But he's, it's, it's so great to have him here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but he's very confident as a musician, and he leads spectacular performances. I mean, he has a track record now. Even at just 35, he's got a track record with the City of Birmingham Symphony in England and with guest conducting in Berlin and Amsterdam and Vienna that has really proven this is a guy with something to say musically, but his personality is such that we'll all relate to him, I think. Right. I think he's a very relatable sort of fellow. Looking forward to that. All right, yeah. Brian McCreeth, thanks for sharing your thoughts. My pleasure, your my pleasure.